Hello viewers, welcome to today's lecture on microcontroller application examples. We have already discussed in bits and pieces various components that you require in building a complete application like interfacing of memory devices, external memory, interfacing of various types of input output devices and also we have discussed the uh, how you can write program for some particular application. Today we shall consider some complete examples for some specific applications. Obviously the application domain of microcontroller is very very large. It is only limited by the imagination of the user. That means where it cannot, it can be used is only limited by the imagination of the user. An user can use it almost everywhere. That's why we are finding use of microcontroller in all spheres of science and technology all, and also in our everyday daily life. In today's lecture, I shall consider only two representative applications. And as you know, we have to follow this sequence. We have to follow the sequence. First of all, we shall consider system specification and we have to do hardware software partitioning. Then once the partitioning is done, hardware part will follow this path. We have to do hardware design. Then after the hardware is designed, we have to do hardware verification and testing. Similarly, for the software part, we have to do software design, then software testing and verification. And once both hardware and software are independently and uh, developed and test test, they have to be integrated. And hardware, so that's why there is a step known as hardware software integration. And obviously, once you integrate, you will get us, you have to do, you have to verify of the integrated system. So these are, this is the steps to be followed. And in the last lecture, we have discussed the various development aids and troubleshooting techniques that you require in building complete application. So let us consider the uh, examples that we shall consider here. First example that we shall take up is air condition monitoring system. Uh, nowadays, almost everywhere where you will find an air conditioned room, even in your house, you may be having air conditioned area. Now, it is very much essential to monitor the condition of the room. That means what is the temperature, what is the humidity, and for that purpose, we have developed one monitoring system which will tell us, which will measure and display the temperature and humidity of a air conditioned room. So specification is fairly simple. Uh, our purpose is to not to control the air conditioner, but only to measure the temperature and humidity. Obviously to get humidity, we have to measure two temperatures. One is known as dry bulb temperature, another is wet bulb temperature. And we shall see how it can be done. So first step, uh, as we uh, as we uh, know, we have to make the hardware software partitioning from the specification. So specification is now known. Uh, we have to uh, build a block diagram of the system, which will represent the hardware that you require. And it is uh, it is very convenient to start from the input output side to identify what are the input output devices you will require. In, for this particular application. Obviously, the uh, number and types of input output devices that you will require for an application will vary from application to application. So let us see what you require for this particular application. First of all, uh, you will require some temperature transducer. Temperature transducer. And what this temperature transducer will do? 
it will con it will uh, it will uh, convert the temperature into some electrical signal we have already discussed various types of temperature transducer so in this particular case we find that ic temperature transducer is the most ideal so we shall be using ic temperature transducer and as a, as i mentioned we have to measure the humidity we have to measure the humidity of the room obviously humidity cannot be directly measured we have to measure it indirectly for that purpose we shall use another transducer so here is another transducer another temperature transducer this temperature transducer will measure the dry temperature and this will measure the wet temperature conventionally uh, uh, these are known as dry bulb temperature and wet bulb temperature so uh, in this for this particular sensor in the dry condition the temperature is sense and for this sensor usually uh, some wet uh, cotton uh, cloth or something is wrapped around it and then it is kept in the air conditioned room and then uh, sometimes air is blown on that and that temperature is measured then from this dry bulb temperature and wet bulb temperature so this is dry bulb and this is wet bulb from these two temperatures we can get the humidity first of all we shall be getting these two temperatures and we shall display it then from these two temperatures we can get the uh, humidity in percentage that is known as relative humidity by using a psychometric chart a table is available in which if you know the dry dry temperature or dry bulb temperature and wet bulb temperature you can get the humidity so we shall use that particular chart and to get the humidity and obviously it will require some signal conditioning circuit signal conditioning circuit which will convert the corresponding electrical signal suitable for some uh, i mean for applic application to an analog to digital converter so this will go to analog uh, to an analog to digital con uh, converter having at least two inputs we shall see uh, which particular adc can be used for this purpose it must have two channels at least two channels one and two and uh, apart from this we have seen that uh, we have to display the temperature another requirement is we have to display the temperature and humidity so you will require some led displays here so we shall use four led displays for that for this purpose and this is the uh, io ports and driver to to drive the display devices you will require some io ports and io ports will obviously interface with the microcontroller which will drive the uh, this uh, these leds light emitting diodes so four seven segment leds are used for this purpose which are shown here and now uh, let us see what are the other things you require to build a microcontroller based systems here is your microcontroller we shall use 8051 and 8051 is not having any built in rom so we shall use one external ep rom which will hold the program as well as the uh, as well as the uh, table that i mentioned uh, which will store the psych psychometric chart so you can say this is amplifier essentially it is a signal conditioning circuit 
and here is the system bus that we shall realize by using the ports of the ports of the uh, AD convert uh, ports of the edge uh, ports of the edge zero five one, and through this the external ROM can be interfaced, the ADC can be interfaced, the I/O ports. Uh, will uh, will uh, will be implemented, which will drive the LEDs. Essentially, this is the uh, hardware block diagram that you require uh, for this purpose. Then, uh, the software we shall consider later. Let us consider in details the amplifier that you require, transducers based on the transducer we are using, and uh, the ROM and the various ports that you require and the display devices. The transducer that we are using is is essentially a uh, AD590. That transducer that we are using is AD590. This is, this is an IC temperature tra transducer. It has got three terminals, which is this is equivalent to a constant current source as you know and this transducer uh, will generate say uh, in the temperature range that we are interested in is say 15 degree centigrade to maybe 40 40 degree centigrade this is the range over which we want to measure the temperature and since this this is a PTAT device it will generate the minus 288 microampere for 15 degree centigrade and for 40 degree centigrade it will generate about minus 315 uh, microampere. So this is the card corresponding card. Now what do you want? We want 0 volt for 15 degree centigrade and we want say uh, minus uh, plus 5 volt for minus 315 degree centigrade. So what we do, we do some kind of translation, current translation, we translate it and in other words we subtract 258 microampere and then we invert it and get 5 volt for this uh, 315 uh, microampere and 0 volt for uh, 0 microampere. So that is being done with the help of one seven four one. This is the detailed circuit, uh, which will do it. And how it is done is explained here. First of all, uh, we have to. Uh, subtract 200 to to about 288 microampere of current that is done with the help of this uh, particular uh, resistors you, you see here this is connected to a summing amplifier and here this is the the current flows in this direction so that's why it is minus and this will give current in this direction this is a positive volt and a suitable current is passed through it to generate a current which will make this uh, voltage whenever it is 15 degree centigrade this much current is synced and so it will be neutralized and this current will flow through this path and you will get zero current that means that this will supply 288 microampere and this current will flow it will not flow through the amplifier now uh, how do we get uh, plus 5 volt corresponding to this for that purpose again we are using one resistor and capacitor resistors, uh, two resistors, one here and another trimmer here, which will not only amplify the uh, vol I mean amplify the signal, but will convert from current to voltage. So it will translate from current to voltage. It will do the inversion also, and then here you will get the output, and so you will get roughly. Uh, 0 to 5 volt which will be converted into 0 to 255 then we shall add as if we shall be adding 115.0 and 45.0 and we shall get a display of say 150 for this and 405 
So this will represent 40 degree centigrade and this will represent 15 degree centigrade. So you see this is how the translation is being done uh, from from with the, from this temperature transducers and this is connected to the positive input and this is connected to the ground negative input minus 5 volt this is connected to positive uh, negative input this is connected to ground this is connected to the negative input and this this goes to the uh, negative input of the op amp so this is the signal conditioning circuit designed for the transducer. So this is the transducer and the signal condi conditioning circuit to generate 0 volt for 15 degree centigrade and 5 volt for uh, 40 degree centigrade, which again with the help of a program, we shall display 15 and 40, 15.5 and 40.5 for the corresponding temperatures, 15 degree centigrade and 40 degree centigrade. So based on this, the detailed circuit is shown here, as you can see. Here we are using one 8051, 8051 micro, microcontroller uh, using port P1. We are using two-digit display. We have to use four seven-segment LEDs, as you can see. So one port that is available to us, port P1, we shall use it, use it to display two digits and another port we shall implement with the help of 74LS377, another 8-bit. So with the help of this 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, 16 ports, we shall be uh, displaying uh, four seven-segment LEDs and for that purpose we shall require 7448 display drivers. These are display drivers. And the sensor and amplifier details we have discussed. Now we shall be using 0809 ADC with multiplexer. This ADC has got built in eight channel multiplexer. Obviously for this application, we shall be using only two channels and uh, we shall select the microprocessor will select one of the two channels microcontroller will select one of the two channels and read data either from one, this sensor or from this sensor. And uh, these are the typical circuit that you have already discussed in detail. This is the latch which will uh, convert uh, that uh, at this uh, at this latching is done here. This is the data, data bus P through port 0 and the address is available here. So port P2 gives you higher order address and lower order address comes from here, which is used to select the EPROM and also uh, some the, 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 some lines are used to select this ADC and also and this port, uh, port 7 for LS377. So this is the detailed hardware circuit diagram. And as you know, some of the port lines, P3 port lines are used uh, to select this uh, uh, ROM, ADC, like read, write, and various other lines. Those are not shown here, all these details, because we have already discussed in detail uh, the interfacing of your external memory, interfacing of ADC, or we have already discussed. So this is the detailed hardware diagram. Now let us come to the flowchart that will realize the software. So whatever we have done by hardware, that will be used to uh, realize the system with the help of uh, entire system and uh, necessary program is written and the flowchart is shown here. So this is, we shall start with, we shall start with a start symbol. And first thing that we have to do is initialize IO ports. And as you uh, first turn on, it will give some sign on music that program is written. There is a loudspeaker through which you get the sign on music and you have to enable interrupts. And after this is done, it goes to uh, measure the measure the dry bulb temperature.
that means it selects this particular port say this particular port and the data is read and transferred to the internal ram as you can see there is no intern external ram so internal ram is good enough and this is this data is stored in this internal ram and similarly uh, we shall read the wet uh, well, well bulb temperature but before that this temperature is displayed display then after some delay so that a human user can read the dry bulb temperature it goes to the next step which will measure the wet bulb temperature wet bulb temperature and same thing it will display you have to write the program and data will go to the uh, leds to display the wet bulb temperature and we shall see how these are distinguished again there will be a delay so that the user can read the wet bulb temperature then as i mentioned earlier with the help of a psychometric chart from this wet dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures we can convert the humidity and a table lookup is used which is stored in this uh, in this rom in this ep rom that uh, tem uh, that chart is stored and from which you can get the humidity so it finds the humidity and after the humidity is found out again it will display display the humidity now uh, you have to check whether the humidity level is uh, within the range uh, greater than 97 percent if the humidity is greater than 97 percent an alarm is generated so an alarm is generated and it comes out from the alarm only by reset so there is a reset input which will bring the system from the uh, alarm condition as you can see there is a reset switch this is the reset switch for that purpose normally there is a power on reset circuit as you can see this is connected to vcc with the help of this 10 microfarad the power on reset is there so this uh, apart from this power on reset there is a switch and uh, whenever there is an alarm with the help of this reset, reset it comes out from that alarm condition otherwise it keeps on looking then after the display of humidity again there is a delay and it goes to uh, goes back to this loop then it keeps on doing the same thing uh, one after the other so if there is no alarm it will first measure the dry bulb temperature display it give some delay then measure the wet bulb temperature display it give some delay then it will find out the humidity display it and check it whether the humidity level is within the range that means 97 percent if it is out of range uh, then it will go to the alarm state if it is no then it will uh, generate some delay and go back so it will keep on doing it let me show you the uh, system that we have built in the lab so here you can see this is the air condition monitoring system which is written here and these are the symbols that comes on the right hand side of the display here that these symbols will come so you can see apart from dry, dry bulb temperature wet bulb temperature and relative humidity we have also uh, developed uh, some additional uh, feature which shows the mains voltage and mains frequency which i have not explained this is also there so from from this you can see these are the symbols which comes on this so user can know this is the dry bulb temperature then when this symbol comes the user will know so the these three digits are used to display various parameters and this particular digit is used to show the symbol that means dry bulb temperature wet bulb temperature relative humidity and on this side you can see two transducers are there which is powered one is here another is here so this one is the uh, dry bulb sensor you can see there is no 
uh, I mean this is not covered by wet paper. On the other hand this one as you can see I don't know whether it is visible or not. Inside uh, there is a uh, cotton and in this container there is water. So this particular sensor is always kept in soaked condition and uh, that's why the wet bulb temperature is sensed from this particular uh, sensor. So we have got two IC temperature sensors here which are shown and on top we have the reset, uh, reset button which is shown here. So that is the uh, air condition monitoring system uh, that we built in the lab. I am not uh, giving you the details of the uh, program but I believe this flowchart is enough which will help you uh, to write program for this particular application. Now let us switch to another application that is related to biomedical applications. As I, as I was telling, microcontrollers are finding use in our day-to-day -day application. And in fact, nowadays telemedicine is becoming very, very, uh, uh, I mean, uh, very popular. Even in our country, telemedicine is being widely used. And this system is developed with that uh, application in mind. So it is ECG data acquisition and monitoring system. And the specification is it, acqu it acquires ECG signal from an analog ECG machine, display the acquired ECG signal on a standard oscilloscope, and transmit the signal along with patient ID. So what it can do? Uh, nowadays, you will find that analog ECG machines are quite cheap. It is available in almost all places, health centers, uh, hospitals and everywhere. Unfortunately, the digital ECG machines are quite costly. The ECG, uh, the analog ECG machines are available for maybe 15, 20,000 rupees. On the other hand, the digital ECG machines are quite costly, maybe of the uh, order of few lakhs. So here, what we are trying to do, uh, a simple low cost analog ECG machine is used, which has uh, analog output that analog output is converted into digital form. Then on a oscilloscope or it can be also shown on PC, uh, personal computer, on a uh, oscilloscope that ECG signal can be shown and uh, that can be captured and after it is captured it, that data can be transmitted either to a uh, personal computer or through modem, it can be transmitted to a remote place for telemedicine application. So this is our specification. And uh, this is relatively complex problem. So we made some analysis, problem analysis, and based on the inputs, first point is analog voltage from analog ECG machine. As I mentioned, the analog ECG machines are cheaper. So we have taken input from an analog ECG machine and we did not try to develop the analog part. And the signal that we get from here is unfortunately of the order of few millivolt. That means we have to use an amplifier to amplify it and get uh, of the order of volt which is required for a analog to for a analog to digital converter. So an amplifier of gain of about 1000 is required for this purpose. Second point is for uh, ECG signals, the sample rate that is suggested is about 250 per second. That means we have to sample the ECG signal at the rate of 250 per second. That is the recommended uh, uh, sample rate suggested. And we want to hold four cycles of ECG signal and for that purpose, you will require about one kilobytes of data. Assuming that the pulse rate of a standard normal person is 72 pulse per minute, from that we can arrive at this uh, formula. If we uh, sample at the rate of 250 per second, uh, then you will get about one kilobyte of data to hold four cycles, and that will be generated uh, from this signal uh, from this uh, rate and that fourth signal of data will be stored in one kilobyte. 
then one an an, an eight bit ADC is used. Analog to digital converter is used to get digital data. And for display purpose, uh, one eight bit digital to analog converter is used to generate the analog signal for display on the oscilloscope. And for transmission of data, we shall require we have to implement one serial port for transmission. So the block diagram. Uh, first, we consider the uh, block diagram, develop the block diagram. Uh, here we start with that serial port. We have to imp implement one serial port that is RS232C. And uh, for that purpose, we can make use of the serial lines of the microcontroller. Then we have to use one keyboard. to enter the patient ID and various other information. Apart from the ECG signal, it is possible to send the uh, send some other parameters like blood pressure, temperature, pulse rate, that can be entered with the help of this keyboard. And it will require display. Which will uh, interact with the user, that means uh, the, this display is essentially to show that uh, user ID and in which mode the system is working. And this side, let us start with the analog ECG signal. Here we get the analog ECG signal. That analog ECG signal is amplified. This is the amplifier. As I told, the amplification required is about 100. Gain of that amplifier is 100,000. And output of the amplifier is applied to one analog digital to analog to digital converter ADC, and that ADC can be interfaced to the microcontroller. So apart from uh, these systems, input output devices, oh, you, you also require one a digital to analog converter PAC, and this will go to oscilloscope. And here you will require port to interface the DAC. Here also you will require port to interface the display. Here you will require port to interface the keyboard. Suitable number of ports will be required to interface these input output devices. Then you will require uh, ROM as well as RAM externally. Since we have used 8051, you will require the external ROM as well as external ROM, particularly the data that you are entering, uh, that you are uh, that is anal ECG data that has to be stored in the RAM, uh, which will be sent for display purpose and also which can be sent for transmission purpose. So this is the hardware block diagram uh, that is required for implementing that uh, ECG uh, system, ECG monitoring system. And this is the detailed circuit diagram, which is shown here. This detailed circuit diagram, uh, as you can see, it is based on 8051. And that uh, amplification, that amplifier is implemented with the help of 741, which uh, with gain of, uh, not, in fact, not one 741, three 741 has been used. Three 741s have been used. Uh, to amplify the uh, signal to get about one volt and 0804 analog to digital converter is used and which is interfaced to the uh, 8051 through the system bus implemented by using the port P0 and port P2. And EPROM and RAM is shown here. RAM we have, impl uh, we have interfaced 2 kilobytes of RAM 6116 and EPROM 4 kilobytes of EPROM 2732 and as you know you will require one address latch with the, uh, with the latching is done with the help of the ALE then read write these signals will go to EPROM and RAM and ADC and the, the chip selection signals are not shown here and 
the necessary number of ports we shall implement by using we have implemented with the help of suitable chips as you can see for keyboard and uh, keyboard will require input port as well as output port here input port is implemented by 74 LSC465 output port is also implemented by using 74 LS373 C77 and the, the, the here you require actually 4 bits that's why 4 and 4 uh, this, this display is, is getting this data from one of the ports and you will require one additional port and with the help of 7448 that display decoder we get two digit display so two digit display and another digit where you can show alphanumeric value so that's why 8 bit is required to display alphanumeric value and port p1 is used to interface a digital to analog converter 1408 and we have we all we have already discussed the details of this 1408 for uh, and how it can be interfaced so we are not going into more details these these things we have already discussed separately like interfacing of memory interfacing of ad converter interfacing of da converter all these things have been discussed similarly we have already discussed how you can realize a serial port RS232C and using the serial lines TXD and RXD it has been implemented this 1488 and 1489 these two are required for level conversion as you know uh, that uh, RS232C uh, is not TTL compatible so this 1488 and 1489 does the conversion TTL to RS232 level and RS232C to TTL level conversion is being done with the help of these two ICs 1488 and 1489 and this can be connected either to computer or one uh, modem for transmission to the uh, remote place. So this is the detailed uh, hardware diagram. Now. Uh, we shall come to the software. Uh, as I mentioned, the system will have three modes. In the first case, it will uh, acquire data. That particular mode we have given the name scroll mode. Why we have given the name sc scroll mode will be very clear to you. This is the flowchart for that main program. We can say that this is the main program. This is the main program. So the first thing after start is initialize ports, memory pointers. Memory pointer initialization is required to uh, get the, uh, you know, that whenever you are displaying, uh, acquiring data and reading it, you have to start from a particular memory location that's that is the memory pointer and then display scroll uh, display scroll icon separate icons are used for different modes for scroll mode there is an icon uh, for uh, other modes there are separate icons so from this the user will know that the system is now in display mode and from that's uh, for that purpose on the LED displays the scroll icon is displayed then next thing that it does is read data from a DC and also it it initiates start conversion that means after reading the data it starts conversion for the next data then it stores data in the uh, stores the data and increments the pointer here there was a pointer after storing the data pointer is incremented then it checks whether any other any key is pressed or not because it has got other modes like uh, transmit mode freeze mode and so which are uh, which can be started when the system is in the scroll mode that is the normal mode of operation it keeps on scrolling keeps on uh, reading the analog signal and displaying on the oscilloscope that is the normal mode so if the answer is no, if the answer is no, then it goes to that, it remains in that uh, scroll mode. Otherwise, it goes to uh, other modes that we shall explain later. So if, it, if no key has been pressed, there is no key press, then it sends 512 bytes of data to display. Here, you may be asking 
uh, we are acquiring 1 kilobytes of data. In scroll mode, why only 512 bytes are displayed, not the entire data? The reason for that is, uh, you can see, as I mentioned, the sample rate is 270 cycles per second. So for ev every data, that means 270 uh, cycles per second, at that rate you have to perform the sampling. Now, uh, we have calculated that to perform the entire thing, whatever time is required uh, for displaying 512 bytes, that will give you that sample rate. If we display uh, one kilobyte of data, then the looping is done, then obviously that sample rate will become half. That we don't want. That's why it has been done in this way. Then increments the memory pointer and goes back to the uh, read data from the ADC. So reads next data from the ADC. So this is how it goes on. Let me explain this uh, uh, this particular uh, this uh, this mode of operation that is your uh, scroll mode of operation, scroll and fridge mode of operation. So say suppose. Uh, here I have represented the memory. This is the starting point 0000, 0, 0, 0 in hex. And here is your 03FF. That is the last. So that means th this represents the 1 kilobyte of data. Now, uh, the after suppose the data has been read from here. First data that has been read it is reading data from here, from the ADC, it is from this location. After that, what, what it will do, it will display 512 bytes of data. That means from 0001, it will display up to uh, 01FF, that is 512 bytes of data. That means if, it, if your starting point is 0000, then it starts from 0001, then it goes to 0200, that is uh, 512 bytes. Next time, next time when it comes back, what it does, uh, it stores the data in the location 0002 and already acquired data is sent to the analog digital to analog converter and from 0002 it is sent to 0201 that is again 512 bytes so in this way it proceeds and in this way uh, it, it it will it will complete the 1 kilobyte but at a time only 512 bytes are shown and on the screen of the crt if you look at it will you will have the impression that data is gradually shifting very slowly towards the left. That's why it, we have given the name scroll mode. <coughs> we shall explain the freeze mode little later. Now, when the system is in the scroll mode, it continuously acquires data and keeps it in that one kilobyte of RAM. Now suppose some key has been displaced. It can be either for transmit or it can be fridge. So it checks whether it is uh, transmit or if it is fridge. Fridge means it is sorry. Transmit is uh, transmit is e. Uh, this is transmit is fridge is f and transmit is e. Okay. So e or f. If it is f, then it jumps to call fridge subroutine. Let's see what is done in call fridge subroutine. This is the fridge subroutine. In the fridge subroutine, it sets the fridge flag and resets others. Then display the fridge icon on the screen, the icon corresponding to fridge is shown, then sends one kilobyte of data to display. Here it will, now it can display one kilobyte of data. 
because now th there is no need for sampling data uh, at the rate of 500 uh, at the rate of uh, that uh, 250 uh, cycles per second that no need is not there so now you can only display uh, it can display one kilobyte of data but while doing it after the displaying one kilobyte of data it will keep on checking whether there is any key press or not so if there is any key press, it can be either S or E. So if it is S, then it is for transmit. If it is E, then it is for again scroll mode. Oh, sorry, if it is E, then it is for transmit. And if it is S, then again it goes back to scroll mode. So uh, suppose uh, either from here, either from here or from here say E has been that uh, it has gone to scroll mode, uh, transmit mode. So it, then it will jump to that transmit subroutine. This is the transmit subroutine and these are the steps that is being followed in the transmit step. First it will set the transmit flag, reset other flags, display transmit I icon, enter present ID and lead number lead number of the you know that there is a 12 lead system but that lead number at a time you can acquire from only one particular channel. So that lead number and patient ID has to be entered which will be simultaneously displayed on, on the LEDs that I mentioned. That means on these LEDs it will be displayed. Then uh, it will initialize timer set baud rate you know that for the for transmission purpose baud rate and other thing are to be set then uh, start timer initialize memory pointer and counter and this timer is needed essentially for baud rate generation and it will in, 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 in the, that you have to read one by data at a time so memory pointer and counter will be necessary to uh, do necessary housekeeping then it will load the S buffer register with patient information and one kilobyte of data one by then it sends here uh, the data is sent one after the other uh, through the serial port uh, along with patient ID and various other patient information. Then after doing all these things it returns back. Where it returns back? As you can see here from the transmit subroutine again it uh, comes to that set scroll flag and reset others. Then it goes back to the uh, that scroll mode. It comes back to the scroll mode after the uh, transmit operation. Similarly, for, from, for the fridge operation also as you can see here, the subroutine was called from here. So it will return to the same point. So either from transmit mode or from scroll mode, automatically it will return and come back to the uh, scroll mode and it will keep on showing the data on this screen that uh, oscilloscope screen. Now let me explain that uh, fridge mode. Whenever it is in the fridge mode as I was telling uh, that counter is not initialized so that's why if it starts from 0000, 0, 0, 0 it will keep on displaying till 03 FF that means entire one, one kilobyte will be sent then again it will go back to 0000, 0, 0, 0 and uh, come back to 03 FF so in this way it will keep on doing it and as a result on the screen you will now get a stable picture it will no longer keep on scrolling so on the screen you will get a uh, stable picture and all the data uh, that, that has been acquired will be shown on the oscilloscope or if you send it to the uh, personal computer, in the personal computer you have to write separate program to display the acquired data. So this is how the scroll mode and fridge mode is implemented in the uh, that uh, ECG monitoring system that we have developed. Uh, so we have, I have explained both the hardware and software part, I think I should uh, show you the system that has been developed.
this is the system that I have developed for this purpose. We have developed in the lab through a student's project. We have used one general purpose uh, microcontroller board for this purpose. So whatever external components are required are uh, interfaced. These are the three displays, three LCD uh, LED displays as I mentioned. I mentioned that there are three LED displays. These three LED displays are here. And this is the keyboard. And as you can see here, only decimal numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Only decimal numbers can be used for present ID and various, uh, various other things. That is the conventional, uh, con that is what we conventionally use. And with the help of these three keys, scroll, freeze, transmit, you can initiate one of the three modes, scroll, freeze, and transmit. And here is the reset button. You can reset the processor. And on this side, you have got the, uh, that analog part. So here, as I was mentioning, that uh, the, uh, the, from the analog ECG machine, the signal is coming with the help of these wires. And the amplifier is implemented here. And here is that uh, AD converter uh, 0808 is used as the AD converter 0808 is here. Then uh, this 1488 and 1489 chips are here. And the serial port that goes to the computer is shown here. So this is the serial port which goes to the computer. Uh, it can be applied to the modem also and the DA converter is also here. So this part is essentially the additional components. That means the DA converter, AD converter, amplifier, the uh, LED, the, disc, uh, the keyboard, these are all here. And this part, the, this, the LED displays and other things are already built in. This is the ROM, and this is the RAM. So these are all uh, built in in the system. So this is the prototype ECG monitoring system which has been developed is shown here. So we can I can conclude this lecture by saying that uh, microcontroller will find application in many diversified areas. There is no limit on the application nature. It is only limited by the imagination of the user. In this lecture, I have considered only two representative applications. One related to process control or instrumentation. Another related to, uh, you can say, telemedicine applications. Thank you.